From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Once again, we want to explain some things that have been a mystery to a lot of people. Jack is so led by the Lord to explain things in a, a simplistic and yet biblical way to us so that we thoroughly understand what's happening around us. First of all, evangelical Christians left off National Cathedral 9-11 program. They were not even allowed to pray there. Once again, the underage drinking epidemic. It's happening out there, friends. And minister bartender surprises people. I guess so. We're going to deal with that in just a moment. But let me ask you, have you used that word chrislam to some of your friends? Chrislam. I have not found one person that I mentioned it to who knew exactly what it meant. And so we're going to be elaborating more. Here you see it. Chrislam, one world religion emerging, emerging, yes. Now, the rabbi, Garigori, has written a very interesting article about Chrislam. And I want to thank Dorothy Halverson for sending this to us. Of course, she lives in Colorado, also where the rabbi lives. And, uh, oh my, it was so interesting, the article. We're going to talk about it in length next week. But, Jack, you agree with the rabbi, don't oh, you? Oh, I immediately called him and I said, sir, this is dynamite. In it, he says that this thing called Chrislam started 30 years ago in Nigeria. We'll tell you all about it next week. And he names names of some of these Protestant ministers who have become false prophets. And I'll tell you, he spares nothing, and I stand with him 100% because I agree. There should be false Christs and false prophets just before Mashiach, our Christ, returns. And that's Matthew chapter 24, verses 5, 11, and 24. We're going to have a lot to say about it. But he says he knows over 300 individuals who have already succumbed to this thing. And as I've been telling you, it happened here in America on June 26th, and it was supposed to occur in 26 states, but it climbed to 32, where they tried to promote the union of Christianity and Islam. You can't do it, and I'm thanking God for this rabbi who's taking that stand, and you're going to hear plenty of what he has to say next week. Now, Rick Sella, yes. I have to have a little fun, too. I heard about a rabbi and a priest who were the greatest of friends. <laughs> and the priest would constantly go out with the rabbi to eat. One day he said, he said, Rabbi, when are you going to start eating a little pork? And he said, when you get married, Father. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the rabbi <laughs> say, amen. We're looking forward to what this great rabbi has to say next week. It's going to be explosive, believe me. Oh, yes. He's a great writer. I really enjoyed that article. Well, you know, friends, something happened in Washington that... Um, was very, very evident, and it is written up in the Wall Street Journal. An anti-Israel president, the president's peace proposal, is a formula for war. God help us. Once again, Obama's diversionary tactics, and let me just say this. What did the president wish to accomplish by purposely starting an ugly fight with the Prime Minister. Well, something happened just uh, this past week that was really wonderful. Jack was asked to make a one-hour video for the Prime Minister, and it would be delivered to him saying that America needs to stand behind uh, Israel, and Christians are standing behind Israel and the Jews. Correct, Jack? It's oh, going to be handed to him. Oh, I was so excited, Rexella. Dr. Rod Parsley, a great friend of mine, has collected hundreds, maybe thousands of names, and he wanted <laughs> someone who could really explain the Word of God to the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. So they contacted me and said, we believe you're the man. And I spent one hour going down the line of what the Word of God in the Old Testament teaches about Israel. First of all, Yahweh God of the Old Testament and New Testament said 
in Psalm 122, 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you, Israel. And adds in Genesis 12, 3, I will bless them which bless you, Israel, and curse them which curse you. And we've seen that in history. Furthermore, we have a man called Ahmadinejad. I call him the second Hitler who constantly says he's going to get rid of all the Jews. His Mukti, his Messiah, cannot arrive until he accomplishes that dastardly deed. Well, I got news for you. It's not going to happen because God is going to protect his blessed people, his chosen people. Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8. And though you think you're going to fulfill Psalm 83, 4, let's cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. God says, listen, Ahmadiyajad, and all you anti-Semitics out there, Isaiah 56, 5, Yahweh speaking, I will give Israel an everlasting name. You'll not get rid of them. I don't care who you are and how you try. Mm, well, praise the Lord, Jack. It's wonderful, isn't it, to know that the Lord uh, makes it very, very clear in the Word of God exactly how He and how we should feel about Israel. Friends, do you recognize this great, great preacher and theologian of the past? There he is, Charles Haddon Spurgeon. You know what? I love this man and the way he preached and what he had to say in his devotional books. Take a look. Shall we fraternize with those who bury the gospel under wagon loads of trash? I took a little bit out of that message. I'd like for you to read it with me, if you will. I cannot endure false doctrine, however neatly it may be put before me. Would you have me eat poisoned meat because the dish is of the choicest ware? It makes me indignant when I hear another gospel put before the people with enticing words by men who would fain make merchandise of their souls. And I marvel at those who have soft words for such deceivers. I beg the Lord to give back to the churches such a love for his truth that they may discern the spirits and cast out those which are not of God. Now, we have gone back many years to get this for you because Charles Haddon Spurgeon was not even in this century. But how good it is to know that this man recognized what was going on in the church way back then. Jack, what did he mean, if you will, please? Make it clear to me. Discern the spirits. Oh, there are all kinds of false spirits out there. And the Word of God says in 1 John uh, 4, 1, try, test the spirits to see whether they're of God. You mean there are evil spirits? Yes, the fallen angels. And 1 Timothy 4, 1 says that the Holy Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Ouch. I didn't say that. The Holy Spirit did. God wrote this book, 2 Timothy 3.16. The Holy Spirit wrote this precious book. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And that's uh, 2 Peter 1.21. Now let me say this very carefully. He's not talking about the New Testament there when Paul says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. There wasn't a word of the New Testament written as yet. That would become written in later times, John 16, 12, after Christ had departed. He's talking about the Old Testament. It's God's book. And oh, I love the 14 Old Testament prophets. But the Bible also teaches there are going to be false spirits who create these prophets to become lying prophets. Jeremiah 14, 14. He said, my prophets are lying prophets in my name, Yahweh God says. I have not sent them. And I'll tell you, a man like Spurgeon really knew what he was talking about 130 years ago, Metropolitan Baptist Church there in England. And if he were alive today, he wouldn't be allowed on some of these Christian networks, believe me. He wouldn't be able to run around with Schuler and Rick Warren because he took a stand and he says, have nothing to do with them. Cast them out. And I agree. And I'm very disturbed because I have made 
a promise to almost 8,000 now who have sent me emails, and I predict it will go to 10,000 by Thanksgiving, that I would not have a thing to do with TBN anymore. And again this week, you played one of my videos, which I gave you permission to do months ago, but now you're doing it to throw my people off, and they're calling and saying, i you breaking your promise. No. Let me add at this point that I love to be on the nine Christian networks and stations, both in America and Canada, who've never given me a hard time, and I just thank the Lord that I have the privilege to being with them. But I'm going to tell you something. Nobody can ever tell me what to preach because I accept what God said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word. That's it. Be instant, in season, out of season, when they like it, when they don't like it. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine for the time will come. It's here when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their hearts from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And you hear a lot of fables on some of these Christian programs, believe me. And it's not according to the truth of the word of God. And my Bible says in John 17, 17, that thy word is truth. And if some of you men would start preaching the word and preaching doctrine, we wouldn't have all the nonsense and baloney that's going on in some of these Christian networks today. God, give us wisdom. Mm, amen to that. Oh, and we Rick Sella, Yes. We are now the largest ever. Not only have these Christian networks, but we now have 547 stations. Yay. There's never been anything like it. We don't need TBN. God's blessed. We've been able to pick up 102 stations for the price I used to pay TBN for two airings per week. 102 stations. The secular world. And we're going to win more souls for Jesus. We're going to do it through the Lord and his blessing. Well, you know, Jack, I love that verse. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And this is working together for the glory of the Lord because we can reach people on a secular station. Sometimes it wouldn't turn on a Christian network. So it's wonderful. God worked everything according to his will. That's what we want for this ministry. Now, our brand new offer, Chrislam, One World Religion Emerging. Take a look. Today's video offer is undoubtedly the most powerful and undeniably the most insightful work the Vanapies have ever created. Why? It deals with the final sign pointing to the imminent return of Christ. Here's why. The Antichrist and false prophet cannot appear to control the world politically or religiously until the rapture occurs and believers are removed. Dr. Vanaby dogmatically and prophetically believes that June 26, 2011, is the beginning of the countdown to the most momentous event in history, Christ's return. On that date, churches met in 26 states to begin the union of Christianity and Islam, called Chrislam. In this video study entitled, Chrislam, the One World Religion Emerging, Dr. and Mrs. Van Epi have documented the most shocking information ever taped, using over 30 political and religious leaders to back up and verify every word spoken, including Billy Graham, Robert Schuller, Rick Warren, President Obama, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, Oprah Winfrey, Shirley MacLaine, plus Jewish rabbis and Muslim clerics. What shocking statements did these celebrities make for or against Chrislam, the one world religion? You'll be shocked, stunned, and startled as you hear it. Order this video immediately if you want to know what in the world is going on politically and religiously as you examine Chrislam, the one world religion emerging. Let me just tell you, friends, we've been bombarded with telephone calls and with letters. Keep them coming. This is a very, very important video, Jack. And folks, I'm going to speak from my heart. I've had threats, but I praise God this is taped because no matter what happens to me, my voice will be there for the years to come, and I believe this will be a legacy I'll leave behind for the world. It's that important. The Holy Spirit came upon me four different days as I put this together. What an anointing I felt. Oh, yes. Amen. So make the call or write to us in the mail as soon as we hear from you. 
Now, you know, friends, 9-11, we'll never forget it. Never, never. A weekend of religious-themed observances at the Washington National Cathedral made the 10th anniversary of 